hi beautiful person watching this video welcome to my channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to make this sleeveless ankara jacket and as you can see it's fully lined all the way and it looks absolutely neat if i can say so myself so if that's something that you would like to see definitely keep watching and don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button if you enjoyed the video thank you so much for supporting me and i'll see you in my next video bye guys To make a sleeveless jacket, you need the following items. You need your hip curve. You'd also need a pattern master and you all know that this is one of my favorite tools. I've got a link in the description bar in case you're looking to purchase one. You'd also need your fabric scissors. You need your box of pins. You need your measuring tape as well as your tailor's chalk. And of course, this is for us to make markings and put markings on our fabric. You need about one and a half yards of lining. And then you need about one and a half yards to two and a half yards of fabric depending on your jacket length as well as your size to cut out your jacket fold your fabric into four making sure the folded edge is placed about two inches away from the separated edges so you want to fold it over and then the folded edge will be our center back while the separated edges will be the center front Pin the center back onto the center front as shown, making sure you have about 2 inches excess on the center front. At the top of the fabric, draw a horizontal line that is 1 inch wide. This line will be called the shoulder line. Starting at the shoulder line, Mark out the shoulder to bust point measurement vertically and then go ahead and mark out the ammo depth line. The ammo depth line is located 2 inches above the bust point line. Starting at the shoulder line, go ahead and mark out the front body length measurement which is the vertical measurement from the shoulder to the waist over the bust. It is also known as the half length measurement. Starting at the waistline, Mark out the hip line and the hip line measurement can be gotten by dividing the hip measurement by 4 and then taking away 1 inch from the total value. So for example, if your hip measurement is 40 inches, you want to go ahead and do 40 divided by 4 minus 1 inch to give you a total value of 9 inches as your hip line. And lastly, starting at the waist, mark out the desired length and hemming allowance so for me the desired length I wanted from my waist point to where I wanted my jacket to stop is 13 inches I went ahead to mark that out as well as one and a half inch sewing allowance and then I went ahead to draw a line and then cut off the excess fabric if you like you can start measuring your desired length from your shoulder line and then just mark it out where you want it to stop however I went ahead and marked it from my waist Next, we'll be marking out the circumference measurements and we'll be placing our measuring tape starting on the folded edge. So on the shoulder and ammo depth lines, mark out half the shoulder measurement plus 0.5 inch sewing allowance. Connect the two points with a vertical line as shown. On the bust line, Mark a quarter of the bust measurement plus one one quarter of an inch. The one inch will be for the sewing allowance and a quarter of an inch will be for the ease. On the waistline, mark out a quarter of the waist measurements plus one and a half inches, half inch for the ease and then one inch for the sewing allowance. On the hip line and the hem, Mark out a quarter of the hip measurement plus one one quarter of an inch, one inch for the sewing allowance and a quarter of an inch for the ease. With the use of a hip curve, connect the points on the waist to the point on the hip as shown. Then connect the points from the bust to the waist. Starting at the shoulder line, 
mark half the ammo depth line plus one inch and then at that point go ahead and mark half an inch in as shown starting at the point where the shoulder and the ammo depth line meet measure one inch vertically and then go ahead and draw in the ammo curve as shown Starting at the center back on the shoulder line, mark the neck width horizontally. Starting at the shoulder line, mark the back neck depth vertically and then go ahead and draw in the neckline as shown. It's important to mention that the back neck depth shouldn't be too low. On the center front, Mark the front neck depth, which should be slightly lower than the back neck depth. Then go ahead and draw in the neckline as shown. Draw in the shoulder slants from the shoulder neck point to the one inch drop on the ammo depth line. The shoulder neck point is where the shoulder and the neck meet. At the top of the shoulder slant, add half an inch sewing allowance and then go ahead and cut out as shown. While cutting, cut out only the back neckline as you will need to unpin the back from the front before cutting out the front neckline. This is because the front neckline is obviously lower than the back neckline and you don't want to accidentally cut out your back neckline to be too low. Starting at the folded edge of the center back, go ahead and measure 1 inch onto the center front and then cut it up after measuring. To cut out the front neckline, unpin the back as shown and then go ahead and redraw the neck curve and then cut out the neckline. Carefully separate the back piece from the front pieces and then go ahead and pin the pieces together. To cut the front lining, grab the leftover fabric and then fold along the opposite grain. Cut out the desired length using the main fabric as a template and then go ahead and add 2 inches to what you have and cut. Divide the fabric into two by cutting it vertically as shown. Carefully place the facing onto the front piece of the jacket so that we can measure how much lining we need to add to the facing to get full coverage. To determine how much lining we need, measure the fullest part of the jacket which is the hip area and then go ahead and cut out two pieces of lining with the measurement that you've just taken. However, it's safer to add about three extra inches to the measurement that you took. Place the facing on the lining so that the right side of the facing is down and then go ahead and cut the lining to the same length as the facing. Afterwards, go ahead and pin the facing to the lining and then mark out the sewing allowance of a half an inch and then go ahead and sew. You want to repeat this for the second facing and second piece of lining. After sewing, Top stitched both pieces by sewing the seams to the lining as shown. Place both pieces on each other so that the right sides are facing each other. You also want to make sure that the seams match. Then 
Then go ahead and place the front pieces on the lining, pin into place and then cut out the lining using the fabric as a template. You want to cut out the lining so that the lining is one inch shorter at the hem than the main fabric. So what I did was I went ahead to mark out one inch on my main fabric, fold it over like so and pin it into place then cut out the lining as shown. When I flip it over this is what it looks like and as you can see it's pretty neat if I can say so myself. For the back piece, measure the widest part of the back piece which is the hip and then because it's on fold you need to double the value that you get. You want to cut out your lining with that value however it's always safer to add about 3 or 4 inches extra. After cutting out the lining, I've gone ahead to fold it into two and then I'm going to cut out the desired length using my main fabric as a template. To cut out the back facing, grab a small piece of your Ankara fabric, in this case this is all I have left and then go ahead and find the midpoint of the Ankara fabric as well as the midpoint of the lining. You want to go ahead and pin the midpoints together making sure that the face or the right side of the Ankara fabric is facing down and then you want to pin it from the middle all the way to the sides as shown. Afterwards, go ahead and mark out a sewing allowance of half an inch all the way and then sew on this sewing allowance. After sewing the pieces together, go ahead and top stitch. Place the back piece on the folded lining, making sure that the folded edges align. Pin it into place and then cut the lining using the fabric or the main fabric rather as a template. You also want to make sure that your lining is one inch shorter at the hem. To join the side seams, open up the back piece and then go ahead and place the front pieces on it so that the right sides are facing each other. Then go ahead and pin the sides into place, mark out the sewing allowance of 1 inch and then go ahead and sew as shown.
after sewing the jacket this is what it looks like so we're going to put that away now and then go ahead and repeat the same process for the lining to sew the lining you want to open up the back piece and then place the front pieces on it making sure that the right sides are facing each other pin the sides together and then go ahead and mark out the sewing allowance of one inch on both sides the difference between the sewing of the lining and the sewing of the main fabric is that when you are sewing the lining you need to leave a gap of about two and a half inches on one side of the lining and this is so that you have enough room to turn your jacket inside out when you are done sewing after sewing the lining this is what it looks like and as you can see i left my space unsewn so that i have room to turn my my jacket inside out when i am done to sew the necklines match the fabric and the lining necklines making sure the right sides are facing each other and then go ahead and pin it into place sew on a 0.5 inch sewing allowance After sewing the necklines, this is what they look like. Be sure to notch and top stitch the necklines after sewing. Next, we need to join the armhole together. And to do this, you want to go ahead and flip your jacket inside out so that the wrong side is facing you. At the side seams, pin the lining to the fabric, making sure the right sides are facing each other and then go ahead and sew on a 0.5 inch sewing allowance. You want to repeat this for the second side as well. After sewing, the armhole should look like this. Next, we need to join the shoulder and I've gone ahead to join the other side. So basically what you want to do is you want to go ahead and put your hand in between one of the shoulders like this and then go ahead and place the other one on it. You want to pin it into place making sure the necklines match as well as the sides and then you want to go ahead and flip it inside out as shown. Another alternative to joining the shoulders will be inserting one shoulder into the other shoulder, making sure that the right sides match. After turning it inside out, the shoulder should look like this. The next thing to do is to go ahead and mark out the sewing allowance of half an inch all through and then sew along that point. After sewing, it should look like this and just want to go ahead and turn it to the right side so that you see what you have and check that it's fine. Next, flip the jacket inside out so that the wrong side is facing you and then go ahead and pin the hem of the lining to the hem of the fabric as shown. Make sure that the side seams match.
you want to pin the lining to the fabric all the way and then go ahead and mark out the sewing allowance of half an inch and then you want to go ahead and sew them together. At this point we are nearly done with our jackets and the next thing to do is to sew the edge of the center front close. Starting at the neckline, pin the center front of the lining to the center front of the fabric and then go ahead and sew on a 0.5 inch sewing allowance. It's very important to start at the neckline and that's because the length of the lining is obviously shorter than that of the fabric. So you're going to have the fabric fold over towards the lining. So go ahead and pin from the neckline and work your way down. After sewing, you want to repeat the same thing for the second side. After sewing, this is what the jacket looks like and now we are literally finished with the jacket. So the next thing to do is to turn the jacket inside out and we're going to be turning it inside out through the space that we had left earlier. So go ahead and turn the jacket inside out and then when you're done turning it inside out, you want to push out all the corners with something sharp. However, you need to be careful. Something pointed actually, not sharp. Cut off all loose thread and give your jacket a good iron, making sure to iron all the seams. Afterwards, go ahead and top stitch the gap close. When you're done ironing and top stitching the gap close, this is what your jacket should look like. As you can see, it looks really nice and really neat if I can say so myself. Alright guys, we've come to the very end of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was worth your while. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to leave your comments, suggestions and feedback in the comment section. If you haven't followed me on social media, don't forget to do so. And thank you once again for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.